Imagine a world where you can control your computer, send a text, or even make a phone call just by thinking about it. Well, that's no longer the central premise of a dystopian YA novel in our distant future, and we're closer than ever to making it a reality. That is, of course, if you're willing to allow Elon Musk's company, Neuralink, to implant one of their chips in your brain. And no, this isn't straight from an episode of Black Mirror. Since he founded the company in 2016, Elon's neurotechnology company has been working round the clock to revolutionize how our brains interact with computers. That could drastically change how we use gadgets like our phones and even help people living with neurological disorders. In fact, it could potentially change the future of humanity. But how feasible is Elon Musk's plan to get millions of people to accept Neuralink's brain chips? And what's the science behind how this technology really works? Well, let's find out. Elon Musk has always been the type to push the boundaries of what humans can do. However, unlike SpaceX or Tesla, which focus on the technology that transports you and I across cities or planets, Neuralink's goals cuts a lot closer to home. When Elon and his original team of seven scientists and engineers came together to launch Neuralink in early 2016, their goal was simple find a way for the human brain to connect with a computer. To that end, they hired some of the world's leading neuroscientists from various universities across the world and got to work. If you've seen the movie Oppenheimer, it's kind of similar to how the famous physicist convinced the world's leading scientists to move to Los Alamos and work with him on the Manhattan Project. But instead of working on, you know, an atomic bomb, Elon and his team set out to revolutionize the world in a different way. He expressed his concerns that despite artificial intelligence improving our lives, it could become a double edge by surpassing humans and making several careers obsolete overnight. So rather than demonize the impending transition to digitally superpowered intelligence, Elon developed Neuralink as a way to integrate humans and machines seamlessly. After all, why replace humans with AI when you could hire a human in built with the same or even better technology? So Neuralink could be a viable solution to the fear of artificial intelligence replacing jobs. While Neuralink is pretty secretive about how exactly their technology works, we do have a rough idea from public record. Basically, their team inserts a low-power battery powered chip in the brain that's able to convert information from the neurons in your brain into binary code the computer can interpret. The most astounding part of this experiment is that Neuralink chips possess electrodes that can stimulate these neurons back, providing instructions for the body or wirelessly communicating with an application outside of your body. But what does this all mean? Well, there's currently a gap between how fast you can think and how quickly you can communicate what you're thinking via speech or text. For context, studies show the average person can think around 1,000 to 3,000 words per minute. That's essentially filling 12 double space pages in 60 seconds. On the other hand, the average typing speed is only about 40 to 60 words per minute, a mere fraction of the thoughts running through your mind. And that's where Neuralink comes in, to close this gap in our input to output ratio. Even if the chip could increase our typing speed to a tenth of the words we think about in a minute, you could still finish your reports more than twice as fast as you do now. In other words, Neuralink chips could push human productivity to the next level. That's why the focus of the company's first clinical trials are people living with physical impairments that require the use of artificial prosthetics. So with this technology, the Wireless Brain Computer Interface, BCI, they can control external devices like a robotic hand or leg with their mind, kind of like Professor X. However, all of this is much easier said than done, and some of Neuralink's testing has been disastrous. Between 2017 and 2022, the company has received a lot of backlash from PETA and other animal welfare advocacy groups for their inhumane experimentation on monkeys. So despite having the best neuroscientists on their team, Neuralink has had to euthanize several animals due to complications from electrode installments or side effects such as partial paralysis, lost fingers, and brain swelling. 
In September 2023, Wired even ran an expose with confidential interviews from former employees alleging that some of the deaths were unnecessary and due to Elon's insistence to speed things along with the project. In other words, there could be a sinister trail of possible animal deaths in their wake. Despite these claims, in March 2024, Elon contradicted earlier reports and criticism by stating no monkey has died due to or been seriously injured by a Neuralink device. And in the same month, he introduced their first human subject, 29-year-old Nolan Arbaugh, through a live stream on X. During the live session, Nolan told participants about how a tragic diving accident had left with a severe spinal injury that made him a quadriplegic. He then showed off how the Neuralink chip allowed him to control his computer with just his mind. Nolan was able to use the computer cursor, control the music, and even play chess. After their public showcase of success, Neuralink was able to get the FDA to sign off on a second trial participant. This time, they were able to beat previously held world records for brain-computer interface control. Within five minutes of learning, their second participant, Alex, was able to control his cursor. And on day two, he could use complex design software to create 3D objects. As a former automotive technician, Alex reported that, I'm already super impressed with how this works. The link is a big step on the path of regaining my freedom and independence for myself. In a world where Neuralinks are mainstream, people living with the same condition of Stephen Hawking would no longer be bound to their chairs. They could communicate more easily and perhaps multitask by controlling external prosthetics that allow them to move. And in the not-so-distant future, people living with quadriplegia or ALS could move as fast as someone with a fully functional body. In fact, if you or someone you know is up to it, you can apply to be a part of Neuralink's patient registry and be one of the first people to participate in their clinical trials. Beyond spinal injuries affecting limbs, Neuralink's chips also have applications beyond the physical. For example, it can help people restore their eyesight by stimulating neurons in the visual cortex. We could even expand our vision beyond the normal spectrum of light and see in different wavelengths like ultraviolet or infrared rays. That means you might be able to see in the dark, like using night vision goggles, or identify hidden details on plants and animals that emit UV rays. So what's the catch? Why does Elon Musk want everyone on the planet to become one of the X-Men? Well, besides the obvious medical benefits, Elon believes that improving the brain-computer interface could improve overall human cognitive ability. Today, Neuralink may only be able to help people living with disabilities use a computer without assistance. But tomorrow, it could help regular people like you and me manipulate complex machinery or process information as quickly as our smartphones. To that end, Neuralink is putting a lot of effort into making their technology as affordable as possible. At several points, Elon has mentioned using surgical robots to make these chip implantations automatic and less dangerous, so you wouldn't have to worry about the typical risks that come with an operation as sensitive as brain surgery. And it could become as mainstream as getting Botox, but as the popular saying goes, the road to hell is often paid with good intentions. Despite the potential enhancements Neuralink can offer with their brain chips, many people are still apprehensive about the thought of inserting an electronic device in their brain. And they have every right to be, because this technology could change the way we think about our safety. You've got to admit, it would be pretty weird if a random stranger could see into your home using their digitally advanced radar eyes. That's that sounds like a horror movie waiting to happen. Even beyond your physical privacy, your mental privacy could be threatened as well. After all, if your brain is linked to a computer, who's to say hackers couldn't hijack your chip and control your mind? And what about your deepest, darkest secrets? Could people who know the ins and outs of this technology read your mind and steal information you've never written down? That would raise serious security concerns. 
On one hand, it could make our day-to-day -day life a lot easier than it already is, but only for the people who can afford it. Even with Elon Musk's best efforts to make the Neuralink chips super affordable, it'll still be pretty difficult to make sure everyone in the world has one. Besides, the people who might reject the chip for social or political reasons, they're bound to be millions more who simply won't be able to afford the technology. At least, not at first. It could become as integral to our lives as a smartphone is today. Despite being around since the early 90s, only about 60% of the world's population owns one. And for those who don't, it can be difficult to participate in society by staying connected with friends and family, scanning a menu at a restaurant, or even getting emergency alerts. When you consider the added costs and risks of getting brain surgery, this technology could potentially widen the gap between the rich and the poor. We might enter a future where not having a chip could negatively impact your chances of getting a job because employers expect their staff to have augmented human abilities. As a result, your decision or financial ability to get a chip could affect your career options, financial health, and overall quality of life. So to avoid being left on the other side of the digital divide, you and everyone you know might have no choice but to become a sort of cyborg with gadgets like your phone or computer becoming a literal extension of your body. Imagine having to disconnect a physical part of yourself to unplug from technology. For a society that already experiences missing limb syndrome with devices we can physically put away, how would we behave when computers are in our heads? If we become over-reliant on Neuralink, it could start a new wave of digital addiction. And who knows what natural human abilities we could lose in our quest to become superhuman. However, in a recent interview, Elon Musk said this technology isn't going to pounce on us overnight. It'll be very slow. You'll see it coming from a distance. In fact, I don't really think artificial intelligence or digital superintelligence is likely to arrive before we have really advanced neural links. At least that's where the trend is right now. But ultimately, the goal would be to achieve symbiosis between our biological mind and a kind of digital mind. Despite the valid criticisms, it's more than likely that Neuralink will eventually scale through everyone's concerns and get government approval. Heck, by the time we're ready to take the technology from their lab to people's homes and start mass production, they'll most likely have public-wide support. They might even roll out the option of pre-orders with people eagerly anticipating the chip's global launch. After all, who wouldn't want their spouse with locked-in syndrome to speak again or see a paralyzed child walk and run for the first time. But beyond improving the lives of people living with neurological disabilities, what could inserting a Neuralink chip mean for a normal person? What would it mean for humanity if this technology were successful? First of all, this technology could create a new class of superhumans with enhanced memories and cognitive abilities. Imagine never having to worry about forgetting a great idea you had because you can instantly take notes on your phone. Additionally, Neuralink could also expand to allow us to link with other devices through a Wi-Fi connection, allowing you to drive your car with no hands or start the rinse cycle on your washing machine while you're in another room. Robots would no longer be fancy gadgets that make your chores easier. It'd be an extension of ourselves, especially in the manufacturing industry. Neuralink could make it easier to control heavy machinery and reduce workplace injuries that cause permanent damage to people like Alex. And beyond the manufacturing world, these chips could increase the success rate of life-changing surgeries. Enhanced doctors would be able to use their surgical tools with such remarkable precision and deaths due to human error in the medical field would drop dramatically. Even the way we communicate and share information could change overnight. You know, the auto-generated subtitles you never see when someone switches to another language in the movies? Imagine being able to see those in your head in real time. Neuralink chips could help us process foreign languages faster and translate them to our brain in real time. In other words, you wouldn't need subtitles to watch your favorite anime or get worried about visiting a country that doesn't speak your language. That would break down several language barriers and reduce global conflicts caused by poor communication. You could even become friends with people who've never spoken a word of English in their lives. Would you even be motivated to keep your Duolingo streak going in such a world? 
Another way Neuralink could change how we communicate is by making the spread of information instantaneous. You wouldn't have to use sign language or make eye contact with your friend to tell them something discreet at the office or a bar. All you'd have to do is send them a message telepathically and you could start a real conversation in your head. Besides making office gossip easier, it can make military operatives like the Navy SEAL more efficient at their jobs by allowing intelligence officers to communicate with on-site soldiers in real time. There's no limit to how many industries this technology would impact. So, with all that said, would you willingly sign up to have a Neuralink chip implanted in your brain? Or do you feel it's a horrible idea?